Justin, and welcome to my channel. My name is Jared. I was looking at X today, and all these posts were coming up about the sun. Like, the sun is doing something unusual right now. For example, there's this post from Landon Muller. Folks, this is unbelievable. This is now the fourth full halo CME, or coronal mass ejection, launched at Earth in 28 hours. I've never seen anything like this. And there's a whole bunch of, of other stuff that we're going to look at in just a minute. Um, as you know, I'm keeping a spreadsheet tracking all these different events taking place on the sun. Uh, but before we get into all that, I want to do something. I was talking to Jen from Christian Fire Poppy channel. Uh, make sure to subscribe to her. Uh, I'll put the link for her channel in the description box below. But you can also go to my homepage and then come down to featured channels. And she's right here. Okay. So make sure to subscribe to her. She's almost to 7,000. So anyway... If you like my content, you're probably going to like hers as well. Uh, she sent this to me. She's doing something special uh, for today, May 9th. Um, and so I would encourage you to participate. So this is like from one of her slides, uh, from one of her videos. Let's fulfill Elder Anderson's invitation on Thursday, May 9th, 2024. Imagine if thousands of members flooded into the temple on May 9th to pray with motions of a hidden fire, as Elder Holland said. Let's do what Elder Anderson asked on the special day he mentioned in his talk. So if you don't know what she's talking about, he told the story. Uh, and by the way, his talk was one that talked a lot about angels. But he told a, a really interesting story about how, you know, he was going to the temple and he kept like just uh, seemingly by chance. Of course, it wasn't by chance. It was he says that um, essentially angels do assist in the work. But basically, he just kept doing the ordinance work for this same person as though that work needed to be done so sooner than later. And as he's doing, as he's telling the story, uh, a date that he mentions is May 9th. So that's why she, well, there's a couple reasons why she selected this day to do it. But anyway, she says, um, it was a day of angels. And he says that in the talk. Uh, we can pray for Pentecostal outpourings fullness of the Holy Ghost, and, and then she quotes from his talk, my my beloved, <coughs> excuse me, my beloved friends, if we are able and have not already increased our attendance at the temple, let us regularly find time to worship in the house of the Lord. Let us pray for the temples that have been announced, that properties can be purchased, that governments will approve plans, that talented workers will see their gifts magnified, in that the sacred dedications will bring the approval of heaven and the visit of angels. And uh, I'm sure you know, there. I did a video recently talking about this. There's always opposition to temples. Brigham Young talked about the fact that the, the bells of hell ring whenever a temple is announced and um, the church is constructing a temple because it reduces Satan's power. And um, recently, we have this new uh, temple. I think it's called the Lone Temple, Nevada uh, the, the lone, sorry, the lone mountain Nevada temple, uh, that's in the Las Vegas area. That's like, that was recently announced and there's been opposition to that temple. And then we think about other temples as well. I think about the temple that was announced for Russia. We still haven't seen any news for that. No renderings, no, um, site, um, identified for the temple. So this is a really good idea. So if you can go to the temple today, please do it. If not, then say a prayer. Say a prayer for the temples, say a prayer that governments uh, will approve plans and that opposition will be reduced. So please do that today. Maybe pause the video and just say a quick prayer right now. Um, prayers, especially when we're united, uh, can really bring about miracles. Uh, also, she mentioned to me on the phone that today is actually, uh, this is something that we don't necessarily like actively celebrate in our church, but uh, I don't think that there's anything against this. Um, on the Christian calendar, today is Ascension Day on the Western calendar. Uh, it's the it's the Feast of the Ascension. And, um, you know, you have the Eastern date, like the Eastern day, but also the Western day. So for the Western, it happens to be today, May 9th, 2024. And it commemorates when Christ ascended into heaven. And uh, what we know about that is he said, or the angels said, that the same way that he went up into heaven is the same way he's going to come back. So it's an interesting day. It's a good day to pray for temples. And uh, the sun is doing something 
uh, really interesting right now on Ascension Day. So let's get into that. So, okay, as you'll recall, I have this spreadsheet where I'm keeping track of all these interesting events that are taking place on the sun. I'm not going to review those right now. Uh, you can visit my spreadsheet anytime. The link for my spreadsheets is in the description box of each video. Just come down here to the bottom to these tabs where you can click on these three bars and then go to the spreadsheet called Signs Sun. Okay, that's where you can find this. And I've also done videos. I'll put the link for this video in the description box below. Extremely rare event on the sun where I show the pictures and the videos if you're interested in that. But there's just been all these things taking place with the sun, things that we've never seen before, uh, the largest uh, phenomena of their kind, just on and on and on, so many interesting things. And um, so I have three new things. So let me just show you how I experienced this. So I was on X, I saw this, and then I saw other posts. Here's another one from the same person from Landon. Noah has quickly gotten around to including the fourth Halo CME in their forecast. This is just remarkable. So uh, Noah has that recorded. You have this like this like string of uh, CMEs. This is from Dr. Tamitha Skov. It is a hashtag solar storm train. We now have five. <coughs> excuse me. We now have five storms headed towards Earth. Storm two, three, and five will be direct hits, as seen in the, the coronagraph imagery. Impacts start around midday, May 10th, and will continue through late May 12th, at least, at least. G3 level conditions and extended hashtag Aurora possible. So, so don't get it confused. There's three that are going to impact Earth, but she's counting like five total within this uh, short span of time. And I think that's what he's referring to when he says, folks, this is unbelievable. This is now the fourth full Halo CME launched at Earth in 28 hours. He says launched at Earth, but so I, I don't know. It, maybe it's like too new to exactly know what's going on. But the fact is, uh, the fact is, is that the sun is just like exploding. You know, it, it always does this. Like there's always CMEs. That's nothing unusual. It's just that uh, the high frequency right now, these like, five CMEs like within this uh, 28 hour period or whatever is unusual. Okay. Uh, but there's more came across this. This is from justice. Huge quote sunspot AR three, six, six, four has grown so large. It now rivals the great Carrington sunspot of 18, 1859. And we're going to talk about that in a little bit in case you don't know about the Carrington event, because I don't know. Are we about to see it again? There's a, so here you can see it. Here's uh, the current sunspot, uh, AR3664. And here's the one from the Carrington event. So anyway, Justice references spaceweather.com. So I hopped over there. Uh, they also talk about these uh, three storms, like geomagnetic storms produced by these CMEs headed toward Earth. Right, and here they have their uh, imagery here of it. And then they have this second part of uh, today's, their entry for today. And it's called a Carrington class sunspot. Sunspot AR3664 has grown so large, it now rivals the great Carrington sunspot of 1859. To illustrate their similarity, we've added Carrington's famous sketch to scale to a NASA photo of today's sun. So, Here's an even closer um, zoomed in image than what we were looking at. And uh, I, I don't know. I, it almost looks kind of, well, no, I guess it looks about the same size. I guess it depends on if you like squished it together or uh, whatever. But yeah, you can tell that they're basically the same size. Sprawling almost 200,000 kilometers from end to end, AR3664 is 15 times wider than Earth. You can see it through ordinary eclipse glasses. Okay, you can see, so you don't need special equipment. Uh, you don't need like a special telescope or anything like that. You can see it through ordinary eclipse glasses with no magnification at all. That is pretty interesting. That's how big it is. Moreover, it is easy to 
<coughs> excuse me. It is moreover, it is easy to project an image of the sunspot onto the sidewalk or a white screen, just as Carrington did in the 19th century. Carrington sunspot is famous because, well, I'm going to go into that in a minute. Um, but there's fears of an internet apocalypse if this happens. Indeed, it could repeat. Studies suggest that Carrington class storms occur once every 40 to 60 years. So we're overdue. <laughs> That's not good to hear as we're seeing a sunspot this large. We're overdue. CMEs currently en route to Earth will not cause a new Carrington, Carrington event. So I guess like these ones right here, this like train of CMEs. Um, okay, so that's not going to cause it. Let's see. Um, they are puny compared to the CMEs of 1859. Nevertheless, it would be wise to keep an eye on this growing active region while Earth is in its strike zone. Okay, so let's pray that we don't have a Carrington event. And uh, this is the reason why. Before we get to that, here's some like other images. This is from Tom Williams. An ultra close-up shot of Sunspot Region 3664 this morning with my 16-inch uh, scope under great conditions. This region is so is so big it's visible to the unaided eye with eclipse glasses, of course. <laughs> this kind of like looks terrifying, actually. That's it, it looks ferocious. Here's another one, Harlan Thomas. What an absolutely amazing active region. AR13664 defies logic is a greater than X6 in the making. So he's referring to the, uh, the different sizes of solar flares. And uh, right now, for this sun cycle that we're in, sun cycle or solar cycle 25, uh, the biggest one is, is an X6.3. And uh, I didn't have it on my spreadsheet for some reason. Uh, this came on my radar initially... Uh, starting on December 14th, because on, Dece on December 14th, there was an X 2.8 solar flare, which was the largest since September 10th of 2017. And this is one of the things that I have included as a, as a bookend or a bridge to President Nelson's presidency. I have a spreadsheet here where I've noticed all these different events where you have something that happens uh, toward the beginning of his presidency and then things that have been happening more recently. And I'm not saying that his presidency is going to end anytime soon, but it could. He's going to be 100 years old this year. But there's a bunch of things like the eclipses and other stuff. I've done videos about this before. But one of the things are uh, these so, these solar flares. So you had a an 8.2, uh, sorry, an X 8.2 in 2017. That was just a few months before he became president of the church. And then all this time goes by. And then December 14th, there's an X 2.8, which is kind of interesting because that's like the reverse of 8.2, uh, like a kind of like a mirror type thing. 8.2 and then 2.8. And then uh, just a little bit after that, uh, just 17 days after, uh, as a matter of fact, and remember, he's the 17th president of the church. And we've talked about 17 a bunch of times on the channel. Uh, then you have the next largest since uh, September 2017. This one outdid the 2.8. It was an X. It was an X5. And then on February 22nd, uh, there's this latest one that's the largest since September 2017, and it was a 6.3, okay? So that's interesting, but let's go back to this. Okay, so again, what an absolutely amazing active region. AR13664 defies logic. These are people who know. These are people that like are passionate about this. Some of them are scientists or uh, weather people. Is a greater, <coughs> excuse me, is a greater than X six in the making? I don't know. I I hope not. And if there if there is, I hope it's not a Carrington event. And then here's another. Uh, here's a video of it. Okay, so the Carrington event. Uh, I'm sure most of you already know about this, but if you don't, you you should because this may be in our future. Uh, it may be happening within the, within the next week. Who knows? This is from Live Science. What if the Carrington event, the largest solar storm ever recorded, happened today? Let me zoom in. 
1859, British astronomer Richard Carrington saw a blast of white light on the surface of the sun. This was the Carrington event, as scientists now call it, and it was the largest recorded solar storm. Or sorry, it was the, yeah, it is the largest recorded solar storm ever recorded. It was linked with extraordinary auroras, the northern and southern lights that were visible in the sky near both the poles and the equator. So that is extremely far south if you have auroras going down to the equator. In fact, I guess you could say, I'm sure that like the entire earth wasn't uh, encompassed by aurora because there's probably like gaps and stuff like that. But uh, as, as far as like the limits went on that day, it essentially encompassed the entire earth. If you go from the poles to the equator and you have the two poles, so like anything was possible on that day. Everywhere from Canada to Australia, the, enorm- the enormous solar outbursts also caused electrical disruptions from Paris to Boston. So that's a big concern, electrical disruptions. Okay, later on, on Thursday, September 2nd, 1859, at roughly 11.18 a.m., uh, in the town of Red Hill outside London, Carrington was investigating a group of dark specks on the sun known as sunspots when he detected what he later described as, quote, a singular outbreak of light which lasted about five minutes, end quote. This was the first solar flare ever seen and reported, according to a 2016 study in the Journal of Advances in Space Research. So that's kind of an interesting thing. He used the first one to record a solar flare, and, uh, and there was also this Carrington event named after him. These coincided with what may be arguably what may arguably have been arguably have been the most intense auroras in the past 160 years, the 2016 study noted. Quote, luminous waves rolled up in quick su- succession as far as the zenith, some a brilliancy a brilliancy sufficient to cast a perceptible shadow on the ground. End quote. The Times of London reported on September 6th, 1859. So I think that's talking about like the auroras at nighttime being so bright that they cast a shadow on the ground. I've never experienced an aurora, so I don't know like how bright they are, but I I guess uh, it doesn't seem like they're bright enough to cast a shadow. But in this case, they were. Let me know, though, if you if you know more about that. Okay, the colorful displays were so bright that people in Missouri, uh, interesting that they would mention Missouri, uh, could read because I just there were recently there was recently a red aurora visible from uh, Missouri. It was visible from a town near Adamandayam, and, and it may have been visible from Adamandayam. So just check my channel, go to the history, and find that video if you're interested. But people in Missouri could read by the atmospheric light after midnight, according to an 1859 report in the Weekly West newspaper. Gold miners in the Rocky Mountains woke up and made coffee, bacon, and eggs at 1 a.m. local time, thinking the sun had risen on a cloudy on a cloudy morning, according to the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, NOAA. You guys, that 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 would be really weird. Um, you know, experiencing the eclipse at the Kirtland Temple, like that was so strange to me because I never experienced an eclipse before uh, as it started because it starts like about an hour before you reach totality it's like something like that uh, I, I could immediately feel the change like in the atmosphere the the temperature drop and there I can't describe it there's just like a weird feeling it, it was like nothing else I'd ever experienced and I'm sure that if you uh, experienced auroras this intense it, it'd be something similar meanwhile Telegraph lines experienced, quote, one of the most startling as well as singular electrical phenomena when um, a superabundance of electricity in the air enabled telegraph machines to send messages from New York to Pittsburgh without the aid of batteries, according to the Washington Star in 1859. So they, they, when there were no batteries, Uh, This was providing the electricity. 
Sparks flew from telegraph machines in Paris, according to a report in the Illustrated London News, London News dated September 24th, 1859, and telegraph operator Frederick Royce in Washington, D.C., reported receiving, quote, a very severe electric shock, which stunned me for an instant, end quote. The New York Times reported on September 5th, 1859, quote, an old man who was sitting facing me in but a few feet distant said that he saw a spark of fire jump from my forehead. <laughs> oh my gosh. So um, I'm assuming that none of you uh, want to have sparks jumping from a fire jumping from your forehead. So hopefully that doesn't happen to anybody uh, within this, this next week or two. Uh, anyway, all in all, the Carrington event affected almost half of the telegraphic stations in the United States, according to the 2016 study. Uh, but there's more. Solar flares. Let me make sure I didn't skip anything. Okay. Solar, solar flares can also trigger intense electrical, electrical currents in the magnetosphere, uh, according to NOAA. These currents may in turn generate magnetic disturbances in the ground on Earth, which can produce electrical currents in long stretches of electric, electrically conductive material, such as power lines, uh, telecommunication, telecommunication, oh my gosh, telecommunic, telecommunication cables and pipelines. Geomagnetic storms have the potential to wreak havoc on Earth. In 1989, a geomagnetic storm blacked out the entire Canadian province of Quebec in 90 seconds, leaving 6 million customers in the dark for nine hours, according to NASA. It also damaged transformers as far away as New Jersey, including one at a nuclear power plant, and nearly took down U.S. power grids from the eastern seaboard to the Pacific Northwest. Geomagnetic storms can also disrupt, ra disrupt radio communications and GPS navigation by warping the atmosphere in ways that modify the paths of radio signals, NOAA uh, noted. The world has become far more dependent on electricity than it was uh, when the Carrington event occurred. If a similarly powerful solar flare that was pointed at Earth uh, as opposed to away from our planet, uh, where it would not have any direct consequences to our world, were to explode now, it might cause unprecedented damage. For example, a 2013 study from British insurance giant Lloyd's of London estimated that electrical outages from a Carrington-level event might lead up to a $2.6 trillion... Uh, sorry, lead up to... $2.6 trillion in loss, lost revenue for the North American power industry alone. So $2.6 trillion, that is a lot. The study also found global blackouts up to years long might occur because such an event could simultaneously damage multiple extra high voltage transformers that are difficult to replace. This could in turn result in major disruptions to financial markets, banking, telecommunications, business transactions, emergency and hospital services, the pumping of water and fuel and food transport. Okay, however, although the Carrington event was powerful, quote, we have seen comparable events since then, uh, end quote. Hudson told Live Science in an email. For example, two of the so-called Halloween solar flares of 2003 may have each emitted comparable amounts of radiated energy as the Carrington event. As such, Hudson suggested that a solar flare on the level of the Carrington event might not pose as big a threat to humankind as some fear. And I think that's all I have. But uh, I think the point is, who knows? Like, no one really knows until it happens. You know, so uh, let's just pray that that doesn't happen with this. Um, from the sound of it, you know, this this is pretty rare. I haven't seen any other stories talking about sunspots the, this large. And uh, you have this uh, solar train of solar storms headed our way. And that's also unusual. And according to this guy, he's never seen anything like this before. Uh, remember, these solar storms aren't going to, they're not as powerful as the, as the Carrington event, but uh, something like that could pop off 
uh, within the next little while. Okay, well, that's going to be it for this one. If you haven't already, please make sure to subscribe, like this video if you liked it, leave your thoughts and opinions down in the comments below. Also, make sure to share it, and I'll talk to you guys later.